Welcome to the 10th episode of the Python tutorial series. Today we will cover one of the most important pieces of code, if-else statements. Let's look at how these work. An if-else statement is like a crossroads, where the first road leads to one action, and the second leads to a different action. Let's look at how this is expressed in code. Let's say if a is smaller than 5, print the word hello, else print the word goodbye. In this case, a is smaller than 5 is the explicit condition, and if it is met, leads to the first action, which results in the word hello being printed on the screen. On the other hand, if the explicit condition is not meant, the else statement is triggered, and leads to the second action being performed instead. In this case, this would result in the word goodbye being printed on the screen. It is therefore possible to think of the else statement as representing an implicit condition, which is the opposite of the explicit condition contained in the if statement. As I'm sure you've already figured out, in this example, the implicit condition would be for a to be greater or equal to 5. Let's now see a practical example. For this first example, we will take a list and define whether the values inside it are either odd or even. So, as with previous tutorials, let's write the list to be analysed. We will call it our list, and it will be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, as with previous examples, let's calculate the length of the list and apply a for loop. We can do that by typing length of list equals len of our list. And then we can write for i in range length of list. As I'm sure you can see, contrary to previous tutorials, we haven't explicitly defined a list of indices for our elements, but rather we have included it directly in the for loop. This is to save time and also to save space while coding is that as we go on with our tutorials, these techniques will be applied more and more often so that our code is as short as can be. Now, having defined the for loop, we need to extract each element from our list, and we can do that by saying, as usual, element equals our list i. Now, we have to define our if statement. We can say if element modulus 2 equals 0. Now the modulus function, which is given by this percentage operator, calculates the remainder of the division by 2 in this case. So if we take our element, divide it by 2, and the remainder is 0, then we know that it is an even number. If the remainder is 1, then we know that it's an odd number. So, now that we have defined the if statement to capture any elements that are even, let's define the action that will be performed in this case. So we will say that our list i, so the ith element in our list, goes from being a number to being a boolean. In this case, true, because we want to find the elements that are true in our list. So we now know that any element that is not even will of course be odd. So we can simply write an else statement, make sure it's indented correctly, and then from this we can write our action, which will be our list i equals false. Finally, we print our new list by calling the print command followed by our list. Now that we have completed the code, let's review it to make sure that it's all correct. 
first thing we did is we wrote a list that we want to analyze. Then we calculated the length of that list and subsequently applied our for loop to iterate throughout all the elements in that list. Now remember, in this case, the range of length of list is nothing but the range of indices of the elements in that list. So we are basically iterating over the indices just as we did in previous tutorials. If you can't remember how we did it last time, make sure to check the video by clicking the box in the top right hand corner of your screen. Having constructed the for loop, we extracted each element from our list and then built an if else statement to check whether the element was even or odd. The first part said if element modulus 2 equals 0. If this condition is met, it means the element is even and its position in our list will be substituted by the Boolean value true. If this condition is not met, the else statement will automatically activate and the element in our list will be substituted by the Boolean value false. Finally, we print our list in order to view the results. As with previous examples, simply press the F5 key on your keyboard to run the code. So in this case, you can see on the right hand side that we have a list that says false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. And that is exactly what we want, because one is odd, so it will be false. Two is even, so it will be true, 3 is odd, 4 is even, etc, etc. So, as we can see from this result, our code was successful in completing the task we designed it for. I'm sure you're now asking yourself, but what happens if we have more than two conditions? Well, that's where the ELIF statement comes in. Let's see how it works. If relates to the first condition and the first action. Then we use as many ELIF statements as necessary to cover all the other conditions and relative actions. Finally, we use an ELSE statement to catch any cases that do not satisfy any of the previous conditions. Now that we know the core functionality of IF ELIF ELSE statements, Let's apply this to an example. This task is a little bit trickier than the previous example, so let's get right to it. In this case, we have to analyse whether there are more odd or even numbers in a list. So, first and foremost, let's write our list. And this time it will be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Secondly, we will set up two counters, one called odds, which we will set to zero, and one called evens, which we will also set to zero. Now, let's apply our for loop. We can say for element in our list. So watch out, this is slightly different to what we have done before. In this case, we are not iterating over the indices, but we are iterating over the elements directly. So in this case, the numbers won't be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., but they will be directly the elements in our list. Now, as before, we will define an if statement to catch whether the element is odd or even. So we'll say if element modulus 2 equals 0, we will increment our counter for the even numbers. We will say evens plus equals 1. As with our previous example, any element which is not even will of course be odd, so we can simply use an else statement. Our action will be similar to what we did for the even numbers, except in this case, 
we will say that the odds counter will be incremented by 1. So now let's write the final message depending on the case we have. As I'm sure you've figured out by now, we can have three possible cases. We can have more odd numbers than even. We can have more even numbers than odds. Or we can have the same number of odd numbers and even numbers. So, this is perfect for an if, elif, else statement. So let's get right into it. We can say, if odds is greater than evens, we can print the statement, there are more odds. Similarly, if we can, we can say, elif odds equals evens, and in this case, we can print a different statement that says there are an equal number of evens and odds. The final case is obviously if there are more evens than odds. But we don't need to specify this condition. We can leave it as implicit and simply use an else statement. So we will write else print there are more odds than evens. Now, as usual, let's quickly review our code. First of all, we wrote our list to be converted or analyzed in this case. We set up two counters, one for odd numbers, one for even numbers. Then we set up our for loop where we iterated through all the elements in our list and defined whether they were odd or evens. If they were evens, the even counter was incremented by 1. If they were odd, then the odd counter was incremented by 1. Finally, we set up our if, elif, else statement that captured the three possible scenarios that we could encounter. So if there are more odds than evens, we print there are more odds. If there are an equal number of odds than evens, we say there are an equal number of evens and odds. Otherwise, we say, oh, this is a mistake. See, that's what reviewing the code is useful for. It should say there are more evens. So in the last case, which is captured by the else, is when there are more even numbers than odds. And therefore, the statement should say, there are more evens. So now that we have reviewed our code, and as you can see, it's very useful to catch mistakes, let's run it by pressing the F5 key. But before we do that, write down in the comments what you think will be the output of this code. Will it say there are more odds? Will it say there are an equal number of evens and odds? Or will it say there are more evens? Well, here we go. In 3, 2, 1, it says there are more odd numbers. Well, that's actually true, because there are 4 even numbers and 5 odd ones. The odds are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and the evens are 2, 4, 6, and 8. So, I'll leave it up to you to test any lists with different numbers and different scenarios. If you haven't yet watched my tutorials on for loops and while loops, I'll leave a link to them in the video description, so make sure to check those out as soon as possible. That brings us to the end of this episode. As usual, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you've missed any of the previous tutorials, you can find a link to them in the video description. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode, and in the meantime, don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any upcoming videos.